Hello Ride On people. So today we're gonna to have a go at fitting uh, an Iconic mount bracket from uh, Iconic in the UK so that I can mount my quad lock wireless charger for my iPhone high up in the dashboard area. So at present I have my GoPro mounted on the screen mount here and it sits nice and high in my eye view but it vibrates a bit, moves around a little bit which I don't like so much. And uh, my quad lock is a little bit low here when I want to run, say, ways and see uh, navigation on there. So I'm going to mount the iconic bracket in this gap here and relocate the quad lock up here. And then I'll have to find a new home for my GoPro, somewhere more stable, perhaps with an inverted bracket here and have it mounted just slightly to the sides rather than put it on the bars. But I have options there. I've added this Wunderlich uh, screen, which I had hanging around in a box. And uh, I used that recently on a thousand mile weekend trip. And I found it very useful on the freeway. It doesn't look so great, but it was useful and practical. So I might look into getting a slightly taller screen for the winter time, but I digress. Let's get back to the brackets. So this is the bracket from Iconic in the UK and uh, these parts are deliberately uh, left loose to allow for slight manufacturing deviations in both the Ducati and the Iconic bracket itself and it will sit this way and the quad lock will mount to this at the top here the cable will run down the back for the wireless charger so first thing to do is remove the screen to remove the screen you're going to need a star drive uh, this is a t20 and uh, put it on the t-bar and you'll be able to remove the screen with that so you put the t20 star drive into this housing of which there are four and uh, there's nothing to fall out the other side. You just undo them, don't drop them, put them to one side. Okay, that's what it looks like with the screws removed. They're in rubber grommets, so you need to use a, a slight bit of pressure to relieve them from their housing for all four points, but it should come off cleanly in one go. There we have the screen removed with the uh, rubber grommets still in situ. And this is how the bike looks with the screen removed. Now you won't have to, but I'm going to have to remove the Sugru that I applied to this 3M sticky GoPro mount to remove my GoPro. So the GoPro mount came off with the Sugru and 3M sticky in one smooth movement, just uh, using hand pressure, no tools, didn't even need to heat it up. It was very secure, very firmly stuck, but just a bit of pressure and that came off. So if you've done that mod, uh, you'll need to do that if you're removing it. But for the vast majority of you, uh, you won't have done that. And obviously this is what it will look like when you've removed your screen. The next thing you need to do is remove these Allen bolts here. There's two here and two here on these small triangular pieces. And for that, you'll need a four millimeter Allen key. So remove those two and those two and uh, don't remove the others and be careful not to drop them. So with the little triangular bracket removed, you should have two bolts the same size that screw into that. And I will uh, now remove the other one. So with the two triangles removed, uh, you can see there's a little bit more room now. The screen has to be in its upper setting to be able to do this. But essentially, uh, this will be what you see through the screen itself. That's the front, towards the front of the bike. And if I turn it around for you, that's the back that needs to slot in. And these two holes on either side marry up to these two holes that we just created by removing the triangular brackets. So as you can see, that's why they're left a bit loose so that you can get them in situ and then tighten them up either side. So let's put those four screws back in and see what it looks like with the new mount mounted. 
So that's what it looks like with the bracket in situ and these four original OEM bolts tightened up. Uh, you don't need to over tighten them, just uh, do them up uh, fairly tight and then just nip them up. Uh, you don't want to strip any threads or anything. And the top half is still loose a little bit, but now uh, it's all in situ. We can firm up that. I move to the front, you can see it now. And the back is secure, the front is just very slightly loose. And again, an Allen key here to nip that up in situ. You can actually kind of fit this technically without removing the screen if you wanted to. Um, but I think uh, it's just nice to have everything really super symmetrical and it's really no hardship just to remove the screen. It really is a, a kind of one minute job. Okay, so this is nice and symmetrical now. Uh, use the three millimeter Allen key on these. Uh, just tighten them up uh, very gently by by hand in a kind of, you know, maybe do this one, this one, this one, this one, and keep doing that. Putting a little bit of pressure on them. Again, uh, you don't need to strip threads on this. Just do them uh, fairly tight so it feels nice and solid, and maybe just nip them slightly more and then leave them be. Okay, so I've got my uh, vibration dampening unit fitted here. And uh, in the interest of uh, transparency, I have to say, I run into a problem. This part here, which uh, sits on this bracket here, basically, uh, underneath this, in theory, uh, but there's no way I could get it to fit. And the vibration dampening here has an internal bolt, which you won't be able to see. It's down there. You can't get it out. It's, uh, it's a fixed three mil bolt, and it has to bolt into this housing. And even with the... Uh, vibration dampening uh, comp unit compressed, the bolt uh, that is standard OEM with the uh, quad lock just will not fit into this iconic mount. So there's no instructions with the iconic mount. Maybe this is just uh, some kind of blanking plate for the screw that's provided uh, with the kit when it arrives, which you can't use because obviously you have to use the internal one on the vibration dampening. Anyway, uh, the only way I could get it to fit was by not putting in that little washer. And uh, when I look down here, it looks good. The vibration of the bracket moves, but if I try and keep the bracket still, you'll see it's absolutely solid, except the vibration aspect to it. So I think it's going to be okay. And I'm gonna run with that and see how we get on. Okay, so I've got the actual uh, quad lock mount now installed on top. And next job will be to uh, sort out the wiring so that it doesn't interfere with the TFT or the bars when turned left to right. Okay, so I've done the cabling now. Uh, I've got this cheap uh, 12 volt uh, plug-in from Amazon and I've got some Sugru, which I've secured, which dries, uh, cures within 48 hours and uh, forms a, uh, a waterproof barrier for the electrics. Uh, effectively just becomes a kind of a, like a rubber sealant and uh, smooth, uh, non-sticky to the touch. Works great in downpours. Anyway, I digress. I've got the cable running down here, which doesn't get fouled. I'm gonna move the bars from side to side, lock to lock. And uh, the screen actually will pivot forward slightly just by hand. And I was able to put the cable behind the screen here rather neatly, feed it up and then to keep it from moving around neatly, just looped it around the bracket and straight into the waterproof female housing. So we are good to go in terms of no cable fouling, no cables visually in the way, very neat installation job. And now all we need to do is check out that it works and put the screen back on. So we can see from the blue light at the top that it is charging when the ignition is turned on. So good to go. Put the screen back on, happy days. So the screen is back in situ and uh, the bike uh, needs a good uh, pressure wash and clean basically, but anytime you've got the screen off, good opportunity to give it a clean both inside and out. And also uh, remember the back of the bodywork behind the screen good time to give that a clean as well. I just uh, went over the screen both sides with some uh, rain -X, which I find really helps uh, in the bad weather. So a bit of reflections and glare, but hopefully the camera will pick that up. 
It's a pretty neat installation from uh, the outside. It doesn't look too bad, I think. Uh, that's quite neat and tidy. And then you can see the housing here. That's pretty neat. The wiring is pretty discreet. And the screen will go up and down very comfortably. And from the rider's seat, unfortunately I can't film with my iPhone because that's what I'm actually filming with and with the iPhone in situ. But I can tell you when I'm set on this at the angle I have it set, the iPhone just clears the top of the screen very comfortably and sits uh, in situ here very easy uh, to see on the eyes. So very simple to see uh, what the GPS instructions are or who's calling you on screen. So really the only slight conundrum was uh, this plate. Uh, which came as standard with this screw. This screw really, I think, is just to keep this plate in place. And I think, ideally, you would keep that in situ if you had the vibration dampener, if you can get it fitted with it in place. I couldn't, but it doesn't seem to make any difference to the stability of my mount. Uh, it seems to be nice and solid. So maybe this is... Uh, I don't know, maybe it's not supposed to be kept in situ, but it kind of looks like it is. So I would say uh, try and mount it with that if you're able to, and if you're not, uh, it's probably not going to matter a great deal um, because the, the bolt is quite short and it holds the vibration dampener uh, aspect very securely, and the actual quad lock itself uh, bolts into that very nicely. And uh, no instructions for this, but fairly simple to do, particularly if you follow a video uh, like the one I've just made on it. Right. Should be fairly plain sailing. The build quality is quite nice, and uh, I would say for £100, which is what it costs, it's, uh, it's a fair value for money and uh, seems to be doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And finally, just for anyone wondering where I mounted my beeline, in the end I used uh, the permanent or fixed secure mount to mount it and uh, it's still uh, uh, pretty pretty easy to see I would say uh, I have my phone up here running in ways and I have my beeline here giving me turn by turn directions and once uh, Ducati and Sidejik get together to resolve the uh, navigation problems I'll be using that as the primary navigation device so there we have it the uh, fully wired in wireless charger for the quad lock with the anti-vibration dampener on the iconic bracket very neat and tidy solution and if you're gonna have the bike for a while I dare say well worth it okay so this is a, an addendum or an epilogue or whatever you want to call it but what I found was that with the quad lock and the vibration dampener uh, secured directly to this without the uh, collet insert, it was uh, working itself loose, just didn't work, it needs that insert. And unfortunately, the uh, threaded bolt, internal bolt in this uh, vibration dampener just wasn't long enough to go through this, uh, uh, this collar here. and. Uh, and secure itself into here. So what I've used is actually the arm that's supplied with the handlebar mount for the quad lock to actually extend it outwards. And actually that's helped because what it's done is it's removed the phone away from uh, fouling the display unit uh, when in uh, portrait mode. It's okay in landscape, but in portrait mode, the bottom half of the phone would hang down here and be halfway across the screen. Now it's a little bit high, but from here, this is the view I have uh, if I hold the, the camera in front of my eyes. And you can see it's at a nice height now where I can see the display clearly. And I can see the quad lock, which is absolutely nice and secure, rock solid. So, yeah, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. And this look may, uh, may not appeal to everybody because it's not so discreet down here, it's set up high. But it means that when the screen is in its lowest position there, 
I can still actually see the display very clearly when the phone is in uh, portrait mode. So hopefully that's a winner. I'm gonna try that out. I'll let you know in the comments how I'm going with it. But uh, it was a, a workaround to get this fitted. I think uh, there's an engineering problem there, perhaps with the quad lock. I'm not sure if you have one, you fitted one, let me know how you got on in the comments. I know that Steve, one of my subscribers and now part of the Ride On crew, uh, he found this extremely tight to get his on, but he managed to get it to bite eventually. I tried for well over an hour, I just could not. So this is my solution. And uh, if you're in a similar position and you happen to have the bracket to fit to the handlebar, then you might want to use that instead. So I've now had time to test this with the extended arm bracket on, and uh, it's not an ideal solution. It doesn't really work on a number of levels. Uh, firstly, uh, if you put the phone in portrait on the mount, it sticks out like a sore thumb. And if you put it in landscape, it's really not at the right angle. It kind of looks pretty good angle from here, but actually it's kind of sat too upright. And uh, that's a bit of a problem in viewing the details on your phone if you're trying to follow ways or something. So I've had a few communications with Jamie Clare at um, Iconic Engineering in the UK. And in essence, what he's saying is the anti-vibration or AV mount that quad lock provide only has a really short bolt in it and it's just not long enough to fit the iconic bracket itself and so uh, probably not a problem for customers ordering the bracket now from iconic because I'm sure they're going to put in uh, a longer bolt with the kit to facilitate that or modify this part of the bracket to suit the shorter bolt of the AV mount but for existing owners, you're gonna to have to dismantle this, take the AV uh, mount off. I'll put a link in the uh, description to how to do that, because James actually posted a video now uh, after, I requested, uh, after I requested he did, he kindly put one up showing how to dismantle this. Then you'll need to swap out the bolt for one of the same thread size, but just longer. So so that this mount here can go directly into there. And then you can angle this bracket down. So we'll have to see how it works in terms of uh, portrait mode, uh, but it may have to run in landscape even when this is relocated further back towards the screen. Um, ultimately, once side jig sort out their uh, problems, uh, particularly the big rock software problem of when you send a route created in the SciJig site online to your iPhone and open it in the SciJig uh, app, it re-sequences the waypoints in the wrong sequence. So it's effectively useless for detailed planning. But when they sort that, I'll probably use SciJig quite a lot on the navigation because the actual navigation uh, aspect of Ducati is nice and clear. Although having said that, having to have the the Ducati Connect app, as always your current selected or top app, means then you can't run uh, ways in the background, for instance, and follow the map to find out where the hazards are, etc. So, some work to do by all of the companies there, basically. And I may actually end up relocating the quad lock back down onto the handlebars um, and running it in portrait close to this reservoir. Uh, which would mean that the iconic bracket is effectively redundant, which is a shame because it's, it's a nice small unit and it's nicely engineered and I like it, but uh, I'm gonna have to see what it's like after I've modified the AV mount to bolt on directly there. And I suspect it'll be good. Um, part of the problem here is not only does it stick out like a sore thumb on this arm, but it actually uh, moves too much. So in addition to the AV mounting, which should move, uh, obviously it's anti-vibration and dampened by these rubber plugs. Because it's on the arm as well, it's actually moving even more. And uh, that's not good because the iPhones these days are mini computers and quite heavy. Anyway, I'm gonna modify that. I'll stick it back on. 
probably take some uh, pictures and if I haven't posted this video uh, before uh, I've uh, tested it, after I've tested it, I'll give you the feedback. Essentially, you need a three mil Allen key to remove the uh, quad lock charging wireless unit. And then you need a uh, 2.5 Allen to be able to remove the uh, central bolt to get the AV mount on. Next thing you'll need is uh, uh, either some small uh, flathead screwdrivers or uh, maybe a, a metal ruler. And the first thing you need to do is prise out this little circle here. So you just put it underneath this lip and prise the uh, tooth circle off the AV mount. So if you angle the screwdriver where these three little tabs are and push it out from under here, you'll be able to lift it out very easily. So next you need to remove the rubber vibration dampening uh, rubber inserts here and I found that uh, a small screwdriver like this uh, with a sharp tip which you kind of uh, have to be careful not to damage the rubber but kind of works best in terms of working it out now here's one that uh, I've pushed in an upwards motion with the screwdriver to try and force the screwdriver through the top and when you can start seeing daylight then you can ease the top out and start working it sideways to actually put it out. And uh, you have to use a, a reasonable amount of force, unfortunately, uh, but the rubber looks pretty sturdy. And uh, with a bit of uh, patience working from uh, inside here at the top edge, you'll be able to work your screwdriver through and pull the top down through this hole. And as you can see, it's kind of like a cap design. Once you get that through, you should be able to pull it out. So pull all three out. So that's what they look like uh, with all three removed. Next thing to do is uh, these three tabs around the outside, you clip them in with your thumb and then you should be able to take the two parts apart. So with everything apart, uh, this comes off and you have access to your small OEM screw or bolt thread bolt with the allen head and it's just too short uh, fortunately the bolt that comes with the extension arm is the same thread and same size head it's just a lot longer so you can literally just swap these out and then the AV uh, the quick charge mount will just bolt into the other side of this uh, in terms of the thread there and then this will bolt into the iconic mount using this now longer thread so putting it back together is just a reverse taking it apart basically uh, these will clip back through these holes these three holes here and then the rubber grommets will slot into each of the three sides your ring will secure and ring will pop back on side um, in the middle there and then it should marry up to the standard iconic bracket quite nicely so let's reassemble it stick it back on the bike see what it looks like okay it all went back together nice and easy it doesn't stick out nowhere near as much as it did with that arm on it and i decided to actually mount the av uh, mount here with the two tabs uh, upright rather than horizontal just means that when you reach in behind your phone with your fingers you can just access that a little bit easier to push it uh, put the case on and off basically when you put it on you can just pretty much just use the pressure of the phone if you've got it in the right place and twist it but taking it off is a little bit easier if you just uh, use your fingers i find but i think that'll be fine uh, it sits perfectly in uh, landscape mode at least uh, when it's in its lowest setting the bottom of the iphone is above uh, this top edge leading edge of the tft and when it's up it's not um, uh, you know too high for viewing so you get a great view whether it's high or low i only have my screen low and so it sits much lower on the bike and it's a fairly discreet uh, 
modification. So if you want your smartphone uh, mounted wirelessly with an anti-vibration dampener on a bracket designed specifically for your Mostrada, uh, the iconic parts uh, bracket is not a bad solution. Pretty easy to fit. We had the hiccup with the uh, the bolt being too short, but probably not really Iconic's uh, fault. They probably changed that uh, at the quad lock end and Iconic are having to adapt to it. But fortunately I had the extension arm with the longer bolt. So I just used that and it's good to go. I'll tidy up the cabling a little bit, but otherwise I think we are now good to go with this solution. Hey you, if you want to become one of the right on people, don't forget to subscribe. Ride often, ride carefully, ride on.